Haycox community. Are we ready for chapter two? All right, chapter two of Super Fudge. Coochie, coochie, coo. Before the end of the week, Fudge asked the big question. How did the baby get inside you, Mommy? So Mom borrowed my copy of How Babies Are Made and read it to Fudge. As soon as he had the facts straight, he was telling anybody and everybody exactly how Mom and Dad had made the baby. He told Henry, our elevator operator. Henry smiled and said, That's a mouthful for a small fry like you. He told the checker at the supermarket. Her eyes got bigger and bigger until Mom said, That's enough, Fudgy. But I'm just getting to the good part, Fudge said. Peter, Mom said, It's getting very warm in here. Why don't you take Fudge outside? He saw a pregnant woman on the bus and said, I know what's growing inside you and I know how it got there too. The woman got up and changed her seat. He told Grandma. She said to my mother, Anne, do you think it's wise for him to know so much? In my days, we talked about the stork. What's a stork? Fudge asked. It's a big bird, I told him. Like Big Bird on Sesame Street? Not exactly. I like birds, Fudge said. I want to be one when I grow up. You can't be a bird, Grandma said. Why not? Because you're a boy. So what? Fudge said, and he laughed like crazy and turned somersaults on the floor. Fudge never stopped talking about his favorite subject. He told his preschool class, and his teacher was so impressed she phoned and asked Mom to come to school. The children had a lot of questions for her. So Mom went to Fudge's class and enjoyed it so much she offered to come to my class, too. I told her, no thanks. I hadn't told anyone she was going to have a baby, except Jimmy Fargo. I tell him just about everything. And Sheila Tubman knew because, well, she lives in our apartment building and could see that mom was pregnant. She's very old to be having a baby, isn't she? Sheila asked one afternoon. She's 34, I said. Sheila opened her mouth. Oh, she's really old. She's not as old as your mother, I said. I had no idea how old Mrs. Tubman was, but Sheila's sister Libby was 13, so I guess that Mrs. Tubman was older than my mom. But you don't see my mother having another baby, do you? Sheila asked. No, but I couldn't think of anything else to say. I didn't understand what she was getting at anyway. When I went upstairs, I asked mom, isn't 34 old to be having a baby? I don't think so, mom said. Why? Just wondering, grandma and Aunt Linda, grandma had Aunt Linda when she was 38. Oh. So my mother wasn't the oldest woman in the world to be having a baby. And Sheila didn't know what she was talking about, as usual. On February 26, while my fifth grade class was on a trip to the Metropolitan Museum of Art, my sister was born. Later, I found out that she was born at exactly 2.04 in the afternoon, just as we were in the Egyptian room studying the mummies. They named her Tamara Roxanne, but for weeks, everybody called her The Baby. The baby is crying. The baby is hungry. Shh, the baby is sleeping. Soon, instead of calling her the baby, mom started saying dumb things like, how's my little Tootsie Wootsie? As if the baby could answer her. Does my little Tootsie Wootsie need to be changed? Yes, almost always. Does my little Tootsie Wootsie need a feeding? Yes, almost always. And mom's little Tootsie Wootsie never slept more than two hours at a time. Every night, I'd wake up to her howls. Turtle, who sleeps at the foot of my bed, woke up too. Then he'd howl along with her. A regular duet. By the time she was one month old, everybody was calling her Tootsie. Right away, I could see that there would be a problem. I tried to warn my mother and father. When she goes to school with a name like that, the kids are going to tease her. They'll call her Tootsie Roll or worse. Mom and Dad just laughed. Oh, Peter, you're so funny. Only I wasn't being funny at all. I knew what I was talking about. But there was nothing I could do about it. I had a brother called Fudge, and now I had a sister called Tootsie. Maybe what my parents really wanted was a candy factory. I wondered how come I got off so easy. Tootsie was much smaller than I'd expected, but she was tough. I found that out when Fudge tried to pull off her toes. I just wanted to see what she would happen, he explained when Tootsie screamed. You must never do that again, Mom told him. How would you like it if Peter tried to pull off your toes? <laughs> I couldn't help but laughing at that one. Peter knows my toes don't come off, Fudge said. 
Well, neither do Tootsies, Mom said. One afternoon when I came home from school, Tootsie wasn't in her crib. I figured Mom was feeding her, so I went into her bedroom to say hello. Mom was lying on her bed with her hands over her eyes. Hi, I said. Where's Tootsie? In her bed, in her crib asleep, Mom muttered. No, she's not. Of course she is. I just put her down a few minutes ago. I looked in her crib and I'm telling you, she's not there. Mom took her hands away from her face. What are you saying, Peter? Mom, Tootsie's not in her crib. That's all I'm saying. Mom jumped up. Then where is she? We both ran down the hall and into the area where we used to eat. Mom looked into her crib, but Tootsie wasn't there. Oh no, Mom cried. She's been kidnapped. Who'd want her? As soon as I said it, I was sorry. Call the police, Peter, Mom said. No, wait, call Dad first. No, call the police. Call 911. Wait a minute, Mom, I said. Where's Fudge? Fudge? In his room, I guess. He was listening to tapes when I put Tootsie down for a nap. She looked thoughtful for a moment. You don't think. We raced down to Fudge's room. He was sitting on the floor playing with his matchbox cars and listening to Puff the Magic Dragon. Where's Tootsie? Mom said. Tootsie? Fudge asked, sounding a lot like me when I was trying to get out of answering a question. Yes, Tootsie, Mom said louder. She's hiding, Fudge said. What are you talking about? We're playing a game, Fudge told her. Who's playing a game, Mom asked. Us, Fudge said, me and Tootsie. Tootsie can't play. She's too young for games. I help her, Fudge said. I help her hide. Fudge? Mom said, and I could tell that in another minute, she'd really let him have it. Where is Tootsie? I can't tell. She'll be mad. Just as my mother was about to explode, I had an idea. Let's play hot and cold, I said to Fudge. You follow me, and when I get close to Tootsie, you say hot. And when I get far away from her, you say cold. Get it? I like games, Fudge said. Okay, ready? Ready. Let's go. I walked down the hall to the living room. Cold, 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 Fudge sang. I walked, went into the kitchen. Cold, cold, cold. I walked into the front hall. Hot, oh, hot, Fudge cried. I opened the guest closet. Very hot. Watch out, you'll get burned. He jumped up and down, clapping his hands. Tootsie was on the floor of the closet, fast asleep in her infant seat. Mom scooped her up in her arms. Oh, thank goodness my little Tootsie Wootsie is all right. Mom put her back in her crib, and then she really let go. That was a very naughty thing to do, she shouted. I'm very angry at you, Fudge. But Tootsie likes to play. Have you hidden her before? Yes. You must never do that again. Do you understand? No. You can't carry her around that way. She's not heavy. But babies have to be carried in a special way. You mean like mother cats carry their kittens? Fudge asked. That's right, Mom told him. Fudge laughed. But you don't carry Tootsie in your mouth. No, I don't, but I carry her very carefully to protect her. Do you love me, Mommy? Yes, very much. Then get rid of Tootsie, Fudge said. I'm sick of her. She's no fun. Someday she'll be fun and she'll be able to play hide and seek with you but you have to wait. She's not ready yet. I don't want to wait. I want you to get rid of her now. Tootsie is our baby. I'm your baby. You're my little boy. No, I'm your baby. All right, Mom said. You're my baby too. Then pick me up like you do, Tootsie. Mom opened her arms and Fudge jumped into him. He rested his head on Mom's shoulder, shoved his fingers into his mouth, and slurped on them. I know it's stupid, but for just a minute, I wished I could be mom's baby again, too. After that, whenever we had company, Fudge tried to sell Tootsie. You like the baby? He'd asked. Oh, yes, she's just adorable. You can have her for a quarter. When that didn't work, he tried to give her away. We have a baby upstairs and you can have her for free, he'd say to anyone on the street. When that didn't work, he tried to pay to have someone take her away. I'll give you a quarter if you take her to your house and never bring her back. He tried that with Sheila Tubman. My mother told me when I was born, Libby wanted to get rid of me too, Sheila said. Who could blame her, I thought. But she got over it and so will you, she told Fudge. Fudge kicked Sheila. Then he ran down the hall. 
Sheila stood over Tootsie's crib. Lucky for her, she doesn't look anything like you, Peter. What's that supposed to mean, I said. Look in the mirror sometime. Coochie, coochie, coo, she said to Tootsie. We talk to her like she's a regular person, I said. But she's not a regular person, Sheila told me. She's a baby. So you don't have to make those stupid noises at her. But she likes them. Watch this. If I tickle her under her chin, she smiles. It just looks like she's smiling, but really it's gas. Oh no, Tootsie is smiling just for me, aren't you, you precious little thing? It did look like Tootsie was smiling. But why would anybody smile at Sheila Tubman, even a baby? That night, Fudge climbed into Tootsie's crib. I'm the baby, he said. Ga, ga, ga. Dad lifted him out of the crib. You're a big boy. You sleep in a big boy bed. No, I'm not a big boy. I'm a baby. Wah, wah, wah. I decided it was time to have a little talk with the kids. So I said, hey, Fudge, you want me to read you a story? Yes. Okay, get into bed and I'll be right there. I brushed my teeth and put on my pajamas. When I got to Fudge's room, he was sitting up in bed with his favorite book spread out across his lap. Arthur the Ant Eater. Read, he said. I sat down next to him. Aren't you tired of acting like a baby? I asked. No. I thought you wanted to be like me. I do. Well, you can't be a baby and be like me, too. Why not? Uh, because babies can't do anything. They just eat and sleep and cry. They aren't even that interesting. Then why does everybody think Tootsie is so great? Because she's new. They'll get tired of her pretty soon. It's better to be older. Why? We get more privileges. What's privileges? It means we get to do things she can't do. Like what? Like staying home up late and uh, watching TV and all sorts of things. I don't get to stay up late. You do. That's because I'm the biggest brother, but you'll get to stay up later than Tootsie. When? When she's four and you're eight, then you'll get to stay up a lot later and you'll go to school and you'll know how to read and write and she won't. And uh, read, Fudge said, sliding under the covers. Will you stop trying to be a baby? I asked. I'll think about it. Well, that's better than nothing, I said. Fudge fell asleep before I'd finished the book. I pulled up his covers and turned out his lights. Then I went into the bathroom and studied myself in the mirror. What was Sheila Tubman talking about? I look the same as always. And why did she think Tootsie was lucky not to look like me? Unless it was my ears. Lately, they seemed too big. I tried holding them flat against the side of my head. Not bad, I thought. Maybe I could tape them back every morning before school, but that would be a lot of trouble. If I grew my hair longer, I could hide them. Yes, that's what I'd do. Grow my hair until it covered my ears. I yawned. When I yawn, while I'm looking in the mirror, I can see my tonsils. I went to my room, got into bed, and fell asleep. Who cared what Sheila Tubman thought anyway? And that's the end of chapter two. Stay tuned for the next video for chapter three. Bye, you guys.